So we're going to talk about the ending because you already talked about all the behind the scenes stuff with us for our magazine. So, okay. uh, you know, you reinvented the Riddler so dramatically for this movie. Do you feel that you have to do the same thing for the Joker in future movies? Um, I mean, as to whether or not we'd actually do the Joker in future movies like that, that his appearance at the end of the movie um, is is really more contextual. So I don't, I, I can't say whether um, we would do him specifically in the movies or not, but if we do, for sure. I mean, I had a whole um, sort of backstory on what, where he, what his genesis was and what that was about. And the idea is that what you're seeing is a pre-Joker Joker actually. Um, and so that's so, and, and it will be critical that he be different. And for me, um, I was working with Mike Marino who did art, he actually did Colin's makeup and he, he did Barry's makeup as well. And the conception that I wanted was that we'd go back to the Conrad Veidt, the man who laughs inspiration, which is the Bob Kane, Bill Finger reference. Um, and in that, obviously that guy has a congenital, congenital disease. He can't, he's sort of like Phantom of the Opera. He can't not smile. And I was like, oh, well, wouldn't it be interesting if, the, if this origin was not like, you know, a vat of chemicals or was not like, you know, some unexplained sort of scars like the Nolan one. But what if we did something where he had a congenital disease? Uh, we were talking actually about the elephant man. I'm a huge David Lynch fan. And I was saying, well, what if, what if this guy's whole worldview was formed by the fact that life had played this cruel trick on him and that life was, you know, had made a joke out of him and that he could never not smile and that people, he spent, he had a lifetime of people staring at his grotesque smile that he had no control over. And that instead of being, you know, like the story of the elephant man where all of his grotesque sort of outward appearance sort of, you know, belied the, the beautiful inside, that this would form his nihilistic worldview and that he would, he would have a, a kind of, um, insidious understanding of human nature and would um, and would be able to sort of, everything was framed uh, through that lens of a cruel, of fate playing a cruel joke on you from childhood. And um, and so that's kind of where this the psychology comes from in, in, um, in who this guy would be. That's amazing. And you have so much lore and backstory already built into this movie. How much of this is going to play out, you know, uh, in, I know you have a Gotham Central TV series in development and there's a Penguin series in development. So how much more of this world do you have scribbled down in notebooks already? When I start writing, I just start collecting stuff in notebooks. And so uh, there are a lot of ideas that I'm interested in exploring. And, and we'll see, you know, you know, a lot of times you have an idea and then, and then it doesn't necessarily flower. You know, they're, they're all like seeds, right? And um, I have a lot of seeds and there are some flowers and we'll see. Matt, thank you so much. My pleasure.